Hi folks, this is Linear Algebra, Checkpoint Quiz 5. Number one, we're asked to find the determinant of this matrix by expanding along the second row. The second row is a good choice because there's a bunch of zeros there. So the trick is, the first thing we have to do is to get the sign pattern going for the cofactors. So it starts with positive up here and then it alternates across and down. So, um, just for convenience, I'm going to call this matrix A. So the determinant of A equals, well, minus 1 times 0 times the determinant of what you get if you eliminate the second row first column. Now, it's going to be 0. I know that. But just for educational purposes, what, what, would, what submatrix would go in here? I delete the second row, first column. I'm left with negative 1, 2, 7, negative 4. Then I'd have plus 0 times the determinant. Deleting the second row, second column, 3, 2, 2, negative 4. Then minus again, 2 times the determinant of the matrix you get by deleting the second row, third column, 3, negative 1, 2, 7. Alright, simplify, 0, 0, fine. Negative 2 times, what's the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix? You take the 3 times the 7 and subtract what you get 2 times negative 1. So 3 times 7 is 21 minus negative 2. 21 plus 2 is 23. 23 times negative 2, negative 46. So the determinant of A is negative 46. And that's how you get it by expanding along the second row. All right, we're asked to find the, ter the determinant of the same matrix using pivotal condensation. So I'm going to go ahead and explicitly let A be this matrix. Now, pivotal con condensation is a technique by which you take this matrix, you use row operations to make it an upper triangular matrix, and then use the fact that the determinant of an upper triangular matrix is the product of the diagonal entries. But we have to keep track of the row operations we use so we know how the determinant is affected. So uh, the first row operation we're going to do to get it upper triangular is we want to get a zero down here. So I'm going to replace row three with what? I'd have to multiply this by negative two-thirds. Row one plus row three. We don't need to get this in row echelon form, so we don't need leading ones. We just need an upper triangular matrix. I'm just going to kill that off by doing that maneuver. So we got to be some careful with arithmetic here. Negative 2 thirds times 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 0 is 0. So that's exactly what we wanted to accomplish there. Negative 2 thirds times negative 1 is a positive 2 thirds. I've got to add that to 7. And 7 is 21 thirds. So that gives me 23 thirds. Negative 2 thirds times 2 is negative 4 thirds minus 4. Well, that's minus 12 thirds. That's negative 16 thirds. So that's what I get there. And then the last thing I need to do is I need to switch row 2 and row 3 and then I'll have it. So I'm going to switch row 2 and row 3. So I have 3, negative 1, 2. 
I have 0. 23 thirds, negative 16 thirds. 0, 0, whoops, <laughs> not 0, 0, 0, 2. Okay, so now it's time to go back. I, I have the upper triangular matrix. So I'm just going to erase this, uh, this scratch work here. So this first matrix is my matrix A. This is my matrix, I'm going to call that A1. And this is my matrix A2. Now I can find the determinant of A2 with amazing speed and accuracy because in an upper triangular matrix the determinant is the product of these diagonal entries. Uh, the quickest way to see that is you expand by the first column um, and, and you get it. So that's going to be 3 times 23 thirds times 2 which works out to 46. Now what I need to do is, is look at the effect that these row operations had on the determinant of A to figure out how this number corresponds to the determinant of A. Well, let's look here. In order to go from A to A1, I replaced a row with itself plus a multiple of another row. So properties of the determinant tells me the determinant of A is the same as the determinant of A1. And going from A1 to A2, though, I switched two rows. That tells me that the determinant of A2 is the opposite of the determinant of A1. So I put these two facts together. I get the fact that the determinant of A is the opposite of the determinant of A2, negative 46, which checks with my answer from number 1. So that'll do it for number 2.